Hello and welcome to Story Impact. I'm your host, Lisa Tolles. This YouTube series is intended to showcase authors and their writing journey and the unique perspectives that drive the creation of their books. I started the series because of my undying love for books and stories and because it's my calling to lift up and support other writers. I'm also a crime novelist and you can find my books on Amazon from both from most book retailers and to learn more, go to lisatolls.com. All right, let's get started. So today I'm so happy to welcome noted crime novelist, audiobook narrator, and my good friend, Jonathan Brown. Hello, Jonathan, thanks for joining. Lisa Tolls, my new best friend, how are you? <laughs> Thank I you for know. having me. <laughs> okay, of course. Um, let me tell our viewers a little bit about you. Jonathan Brown has written three books in the Lou Crasher series. He's going to tell us about those at the end. And Crasher is a rock drummer living in L.A. who doubles as an unlicensed private investigator. And the Crasher series includes a novella, a standalone, and two books of historical fiction. So definitely check those out. Jonathan is also an audiobook narrator, and he narrated my book, The Ritters, He's a fitness trainer and a drum teacher. In 2022, he was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, which is a form of leukemia. So with a lot of love, support, hope, chemo, and new stem cells, he's now in full remission, kicking ass and loving life with his beautiful wife, Sonia. So again, Jonathan, warmest welcome, and thank you for being here. Let's dive into my questions so viewers can get to know you a bit. You ready? Okay, ready to go. Okay. All right. How did your early life prepare you for a life of writing? My early life was a life of uh, coming up as a minority in Canada. Uh, a lot of sports, older siblings, uh, parents uh, that both had. Uh, I had amazing parents with uh, that just raised us right, you know, to stand up for ourselves, to be kind and all that stuff and all that good stuff and also let us know that um you know try to turn the other cheek but if you can't uh you know in not so many words you might have to put somebody on their back and nobody's allowed to touch you without your permission i mean all that good stuff uh you put all that together um we also were a family that liked to tease so humor was very important which was perfect cuz you know, with good times and bad times, sometimes you have to laugh your way out of a situation or laugh at how ridiculous it is. And okay. other times uh, you got to get serious and you got to play the heavy. So uh, just there was so it was just a rich experience and upbringing. And uh, I already had a wild imagination. So uh, once it looked like rock and roll, becoming a rock star was not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I moved over to write to writing and I had even more stories from all of that rock and rolling and uh, being a bouncer and uh, high level sports and all that stuff. So, okay. Wow. Oh, I forgot you want a short answer. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's, that's a rich upbringing. Um, and that ties in with what I've read of your characters too. Um, tell me about your writing niche, meaning the specific genre or subgenres that you write in, and if all of your books are within this narrow niche or if you kind of cross genres. Any thoughts about that? Um, I started, like a lot of us, with the intent to write one book to see, you know, see if I could do it. And I chose uh, crime fiction because those are my favorite books to read was mysteries. And um, I also love the old classic movies. I loved everything with Bogart and Cagney and uh, and all I, I, and I love that fast dialogue. So then I thought, hey, who writes that stuff? So I found Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler. And I thought, I like this stuff. I don't know if I know it, but let me let me write in this genre because that's what I read the most of. Um, and then, I forgot to close my door. I'm so sorry. I'm going to close that in a second. I apologize for the background noise. Uh, yeah, so I thought I would stay in mystery and uh, did a couple self-published books. And then when I got to my uh, I, I deal with a small publisher, shout out to Down and Out Books, that's when I started to think, I love mystery, but I read so wide in other genres. I fully intend to write in those genres once I have the confidence to do so. Mm hmm. 
So right. that's how I, that's how I wrote the two books of historical fiction, because the opportunity, a financial opportunity came up. Mm. So I wrote a book about Angelo Dundee, who was Muhammad Ali's trainer, and Vince Lombardi, the Green Bay Packers football coach. But that came because the publisher uh, had a nice uh, checkbook. And, <laughs> and I talked my way into writing those books. And I would love to write more, uh, you know, highlight famous people, mm. uh, historical fiction, in, in a fiction way. So I'd like Interesting. To yeah. So interesting. Everyone's path is different. Yeah. All right. Um, so what is something that's wrong with the publishing industry right now? And then what do you see as kind of promising new opportunities in, in the publishing landscape? Because, you know, you and I have talked, um, you know, about like everything that's changed. I mean, you know, like it's constantly changing, but especially lately. Any thoughts on that? I, I wish I understood it better. Because uh, it used to be the big five was the only way you got published, right? And self-publishing was frowned upon. Uh, that's over. And a lot of auth self-published authors or indie authors are doing it for themselves. And they're making good money. And there's even, uh, you know, A-list authors leaving their publishers and going it alone because they have a following and they know how to market. You're a great marketer. And I, you know, I tip my hat. It's the same thing when I was in music, you had record labels or you didn't have a record deal. So I love seeing the indies uh, doing it for themselves, but I don't understand. There's so much of it. I don't understand. <laughs> I listen to a lot of podcasts and, uh, you know, I know you got to do the social media thing and all, all the hustle to sell books is uh, it's difficult to, to figure out. And I know a lot of people, oh, they, they buy Facebook ads, but nothing happened. Or they pay for ads on Amazon and that didn't work. Oh, really? It worked for me when I did it. So it's such a mystery, pun intended, to figure out. So I don't know. I know the big five are now, what, the big four, and they're having trouble in the the big two? <gasps> <laughs> there, there, there's less than five. I know there's less than five. I don't think it's five anymore, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... So every, everybody's scrambling. I do know, and I'm happy to say, because I narrate audiobooks, I'm happy to see that audiobooks are selling well. And it's another way for people to get stories, because I have you know close friends that say, uh, I don't really read. If that comes out in, in audio, then I'll get it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that still means that however we, we write the story, somebody's going to either read it, listen to it, watch the movie, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy about that. Mm -hmm. Now you got this AI stuff coming in. Oh, Lisa, I don't know. <laughs> I know that's, that, that, that's for another conversation. It's another, yeah. So much, yeah. so much to say about that. Let me exactly. ask you something about marketing. Um, everyone kind of does this differently. How do you, um, how do you kind of toggle the different um, aspects of the writing journey, like going from like the create mode, actually writing your books to shifting into that marketing mode and then promotion. And like, do you have like days of the week that you do one versus other days or how do you switch that up? I should be writing down what you're saying. Cause that sounds like the way to do it. <laughs> uh, I, um, I do live book launches, which I love. And with my latest book, I did a lot more small bookstores so you feel good that you're helping out a bookstore they're helping an author and i love that but that does not sell a lot of books as far as i know at least in my experience uh no i don't set aside time to market and i probably should but it's it, you know like a lot of us it it really turns me off i think you enjoy it because you're good at it or i don't thank know you. if you enjoy it, but uh, th thank you for saying so well i'll i'll say this i think you would probably agree with me that writers are fantastic procrastinators do you agree yes so i've heard yeah <laughs> the bath the bathtub's dirty of course i should clean the bathtub instead of buckling down and and, and getting my words out of my manuscript and writing is a just i mean marketing is a distraction from that but i i guess i do kind of enjoy some aspects of it but i mean i see it as kind of unavoidable you know i mean we're not writing books in a, in a vacuum we're writing for our readers right exactly. and we want to exactly. we, we want to connect with them so mm -hmm. that we can find out what they want to hear from us. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. Well, I think what it is with me, and I think with a lot of writers is 
we have the horsepower to market, but we don't know which one works. And then by the time we see a couple of cats on YouTube saying to do it this way, we hear a podcast, we try that and it doesn't work. So I don't think we love the mystery of which which way to go with marketing. And so we just say, oh, we don't, I don't like marketing. We it, it All of it turns us off because it, it feels like wasted energy. And we need everything we got to to get the hours into write because writing takes a lot of time. At least it takes exactly. me a lot of time. Exactly. Um, so I I want to ask you one thing um, about your illness. If you're um, if you're willing to talk about that, I'm wondering Absolutely. I'm wondering how um, how that worked for you when you were going through treatment and kind of you know feeling like crap, but still feeling such a drive to mm -hmm. um, to work on your novels and anything you'd like to share about that. Yeah, I would. Uh, um, it, uh, first of all, came. Uh, I had tremendous support, starting with my wife, and then the branches from the tree went out from there. And I, you know, shout out to everyone who gave me so much love and support. Uh, but there are definitely times when it's just you doing the chemo and and you in the MRI tube, or you, you're, you, you know, you're, I was alone a lot. So I, I, I didn't fear dying but i thought if this is it i want to put out as much i want to put out some more product before i go right <laughs> and i like a challenge so the crazy thing when i look back at 2022 was i launched my book chloe which so i got back edits on chloe i wrote uh my third lou crasher book 90 percent by hand while I was at my chemo appointments and I narrated your book after I got my new stem cells and I narrated a book in the middle of all that crap for uh, Frank Safiro. So then I, when I look back, I thought, wait, when I was sick, I was more productive than when than I've ever been when I'm healthy. <laughs> so the good takeaway was I can do more when I'm healthy. And, um, it, it, you know, I had a positive attitude, but Part of the positivity came from I could still do my craft, even though I felt like S-H-I-T mm, most mm -hmm, of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a fight, but, you know, I have I like a challenge. I've got um, like a sports background and I've got a martial art background. So you're always doing hard stuff or you always a lot of training goes into all that stuff. And I, you know, so when it came time to like, Let's say it takes eight or nine books just to write a first eight or nine, eight or nine months to write a first draft. I didn't find that hard because like, OK, it's a marathon, but so just get on with it. So from the sickness, the good stuff, you know, for me, like two books and, and narrating two audiobooks came out of it. And I've lost track of your question now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're amazing. You're you're such an inspiration. Um <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And um, I, I want to ask uh, a few questions now, because this series um, called Story Impact, it's all about impact, meaning and purpose of our, our books and our stories. So what impact do you think your books have on your reading community? Uh, number one, I'd say entertainment. And that comes from years. I started playing drums at 10 in a week or so, I'll be 58. So I've always like, I like to be entertained. I like to entertain and I like books that entertain even. Uh, and that doesn't mean it has to be light and funny and fluffy because we write crime right. fiction. We right. write, about, we write about heavy stuff. And then with those two um, uh, historical fiction books, I was telling their story and then just filling in the blanks with my own fiction so I think the, you know, if, for example, Vince Lombardi was known for football, but I showed a lot of the stuff that off the field where he was quite generous and very helpful. And he stood up uh, for minorities and he stood up for gays. And this is like in the 60s and wow. early 70s, and like stuff people may not have known. So I thought, ha, here's something, here's something cool you may not have known. And I stuck mm -hmm. it. That's awesome. So your nonfiction books were kind of peeling back the layers to get a deeper look into these yeah. oh, yeah. um, into these um, prominent figures. That's awesome. Yes. 
Yeah. All right. So we talked about impact. What comes to mind when I say, what meaning do your stories bring to your readers and to you? Uh, with, <laughs> all my, with all my crime fiction. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. The meaning is I tend to write stories where the small gal or small guy takes on the big, the big boss, the corporation, the, the, uh, the, the Goliath, I guess. And uh, the deck is stacked against them. I put them in harm's way. They have to achieve these difficult feats to um, hopefully, you know, beat the <laughs> the bad guy or the evil forces. And because I think I think we like stories like that, and we often feel small because if you look at let's say social media, everyone's beautiful, everyone's winning. We're celebrating billionaires for some reason all over the gosh darn place. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is not the majority. That's not most of us. So I like to show the underdog and 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 the little dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my thing. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, so what book would you like to promote to our watchers today? And what do you want people to really come away with and remember? Okay. I'm going to start with Chloe. Bad Girl Chloe. Okay. Bad Girl Chloe. So it's the first time I wrote a book with a female protagonist. I always have strong, uh, tough women in my stories. And uh, so that was probably my sixth or seventh book. I wanted to get it right before I turned over, you know, an entire, you know, lead character to a female because I didn't want to screw it up. So obviously my wife was helpful, life experience, a lot of reading and all that stuff. And Chloe, you know, she's right at that about to graduate high school. So she's a young woman and all the stuff that comes with that. And then there's a crime and she tries to help out. She's a bit of a bit of a Nancy Drew, but she gets in over her head. But she's a badass. And she has to be so. uh yeah, again, the little gal taking on, the, you know, the big the big force, and I'm gonna sneak in another book. This is the third one in my Lou Crasher series, Drums, Guns, and Money. Mm. The I have to use my initial J now because really, <laughs> well, I don't have to, but on Amazon, if you if you look for me, uh, you're gonna find a trillion other books before you get to mine because my last name is so con common. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the Jonathan J. Brown, everybody, uh, you you know, I pop up right away. And so my new website is jonathanjbrown.net. So. Okay. Okay. Excellent. I, I was going to ask you where viewers can, um, yeah. can look you up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jonathanjbrown.net. Okay. Yeah. So with, with this last crasher, um, I, I often like to have, I think we're similar that way. We sort of take something that's topical that's going on in the world or, or even in a small town or a state. And in this book, Drums, Guns, and Money, uh, without spoiling it, um, because it just came out March of this year, uh, Lou may or may not uh, bump up against the for-profit prison system in America. Mm. And fentanyl, maybe. You got to read it to find out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, Jonathan Brown, my good friend, thank you so much for joining us today. So delighted to uh, to oh. kind of peel back the layers and see more yes. about what makes you tick as an author and um, and to talk about what makes your book so meaningful. And this again- This is the best. You are the best, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. And I'm honored that uh, if you use this, that I'm the first guy, even if you don't use it. It's just nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm going to. Yeah, this, this, is, um, this is the first. In a new uh, in a new series, so yeah, Story Impact is intended to showcase authors, their writing journey, and their unique perspectives. And please look up Jonathan J. Brown on Amazon, on JonathanJBrown.net. And thank you so much for joining us today. Can I throw you one more thing? Before sure. We go. Uh, I'm also a personal trainer, and all of my sessions and my drum lessons, I end every session with this phrase: "All of the world's problems can be solved with love." Absolutely. I love that. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much.